I'd like to talk about monetary policy a bit. Uh, the dollar's been in the news, gold's been in the news, and a significant event has just recently transpired. It happened on November 2nd, and uh, to me it was a very significant event. That was the day the Indian Central Bank announced that it had purchased 200 tons of gold from the IMF. And that was more or less the tipping point on this recent surge in the, in the gold price. The reason I think this is a significant date is, in some ways, it is almost the opposite of what happened back in uh, 1971 in, on August 15th, a very special day in monetary history, and I talk about that a whole lot. That is when the world announced that uh, gold was officially demonetized, no currency would be linked to gold, the dollar would still be the reserve standard, and everything would be okay. Instead, what we got was the, the biggest bubble in the history of mankind, which is now uh, coming, uh, now being deflated. So to me, the fact that the Central Bank of India has now purchased this gold, at the same time the IMF is getting rid of the gold and the West is getting rid of the gold, it means that there's a major shift in economic power, and that is from the West to the East, and this is no surprise. Jobs have gone to the East, and productivity has gone to the East, savings has gone to the East, uh, the West has become more indebted, and it's not just uh, the United States, it's, it's Europe as well. And I think this signals the, the time when gold will be remonetized. I don't think it's never been demonetized in a sense. I think gold has always been money, but they pretended it wasn't money. In the 60s, they wanted to demonetize gold, and by 71, they claimed they officially did it. And even throughout these several decades, they pretend that gold is not money. At the same time, economic law still prevails, but this announcement, I think, will prove to be a very significant announcement. On this very date, uh, Geithner, the Secretary of the Treasury, is over in Singapore meeting with, in an economic conference. And he's talking about the dollar. He says it is the official policy of the United States government to have a strong dollar policy, which always fascinates me. The Federal Reserve is the one that's in charge of the dollar. They can double the money supply, but then we have the Secretary of the Treasury, and this is not just this time, this has been this way over the years. The Secretary of the Treasury goes before the public and say, it is the official policy of the United States to have a strong dollar. At the same time, they're chiding the Chinese for having a currency that's too strong, which means we want a weaker dollar against the Chinese yuan. So on and on it goes. And I frequently get a question, which I think is an old-fashioned question, but we still get it. And they said, do you think the United States is going to devalue. Well, they're constantly devaluing. We devalue our money on a constant basis. There was a time when devaluations were official and, and, uh, and, and pronounced in the sense that on August 15th, there was a devaluation. They took the price of gold from $35 up to $38. It was an 8% devaluation. It was a big deal. But we constantly do it. Shortly thereafter, two years later, they devalued another 10% and they took the price of gold up to $42. But since that time, uh, since they claim the dollar and, uh, and the dollar and gold was, are not uh, connected, we've had constant devaluation. If you look at $1,100 gold, you're looking at about a 97, 98% devaluation. So it's a constant devaluation. So here we have a government's official policy announced policy is that we have a strong dollar. At the same time, the real policy is constantly devaluating uh, the dollar. And, uh, of course, for an economy to grow, you ought to have a relatively stable currency. People shouldn't have something wildly fluctuating, and certainly you shouldn't have a currency that can be created out of thin air. And that's where uh, we are today. But my concern has been, for many, many years, uh, the eventual consequence of what this will have on the dollar. We've seen a financial crisis build. We've seen a lot of liquidation of debt. We've seen a lot of purchasing of bad debt by our government and by the Federal Reserve. At, at the same time, it's all done by the creation of new money out of thin air. You can do that just so long. You can defy economic laws for a while. But just like you can keep gold at uh, $35 an ounce and you can uh, manipulate markets, eventually uh, the, the, the uh, economic laws will 
uh, rule. And I think this is what will happen, is we will continue to do this. Congress has no concern. They're willing to pass a medical care program going to cost trillions of dollars and pretend it won't cost anything. But there will always be a cost if the pressure is going to be put on the dollar. The, the, uh, the financial obligation we have to maintain our empire and our welfare state is just overwhelming. And, uh, and they're illiquid. I mean, if you look at Medicare and Medicaid, these, these are uh, programs that are literally bankrupt. So all, everything is dependent on the willingness of the world and the people to put trust in the dollar. At the same time, we, regardless of what our Secretary of the Treasury says, we are embarking and continue to just print the money in an unlimited fashion, and that means devaluation uh, regardless of what they tell us. To me, that is very, very dangerous. If we want to preserve our freedoms in this country, we will have to address the, the, the important subject of liberty and understanding that and of what rights are all about, but we also will have to understand the issue of monetary policy. We ne need to know more about the Federal Reserve, and that is why the success we've had with uh, uh, the Transparency Act and, and auditing the Fed is so beneficial, but it looks like right now push is becoming, push comes shove, they are working very hard, the major journals now are working very hard to downplay uh, our efforts and to belittle what we're doing. But the momentum is on our side and we need this information out because eventually to, to preserve our freedoms in this country we will also have to understand money and have monetary policy reform. That, that's a very important question because it has a great deal of significance. If the IMF is giving up the gold, uh, this means that they are weakened. They will have less clout in saying uh, what the next reserve currency will be. If they wanted to have an international reserve currency, they would at least have to pay a little bit of respect for gold. But it also means the great strength is going from west to east. Those countries who are buying gold, like China and, uh, and, and India and these other countries, they are more likely going to be in the driver's seats for setting up the next reserve standard. In the West, uh, Western Central Banks uh, and the IMF, the gold is leaving, and uh, this means that the economic power is shifting to the East, and uh, if history is uh, of any value to us, it means that the, that the uh, military power may shift as well.